Physics is a pretty complicated subject. Often heaps of ideas will come together in ways that you might not expect. Forces, motion, energy, it's all connected. Let's consider this graph here of Holly, a skier on Mount Ruapehu. You should first notice that it's velocity versus time. The slope of the line tells us the acceleration of the skier. One of the first things it's good to ask is, how can we describe the motion? If we look at stage one, our skier Holly is moving at a constant velocity. Each second, she'll cover the same distance. When she skis down the hill, she starts to accelerate. Her velocity is increasing each second, and the distance she covers in this time gets greater and greater. In stage three, the mountain levels out, and Holly stops accelerating. Notice how she's still traveling at the same velocity she finished stage two with? The difference is that she's not accelerating anymore. Holly has a problem though, she's only been skiing once before and she needs to stop before she crashes into the child in front of her. In stage 4, Holly has a negative acceleration, as in, she decelerates. Each second, her velocity decreases and with it, so does the distance covered per second. When describing motion, it helps to talk about it in terms of distance, velocity and acceleration, and how they relate to each other. Remember the video on forces? We might want to consider the forces acting on our skier at each stage as well. We can do this using our diagrams. In stage 1, Holly has a constant velocity. This means her forces are balanced, i.e. F net equals 0. In stage 2, Holly is accelerating, so the forces must be unbalanced, F net doesn't equal 0. She is able to accelerate because the force of gravity accelerating her down the slope is greater than the friction of the snow trying to stop her. This might give you an idea about what happens in stage 4. This is similar, except this time the friction is greater than the forces allowing her to move, so Holly slows down. Those of you who have been skiing might recognise this as making a pizza shape with the skis. This increases the friction, allowing you to slow down and stop. The acceleration and deceleration phases do look fairly similar, but notice how much steeper our deceleration line is. This means that Holly's decelerating very fast. Faster than she accelerated. This also tells us that Holly stops in a shorter distance. Remember the equation work equals force times distance? So what is the work or energy that Holly puts into stopping? Let's say her velocity at stage 3 is 10 meters per second and she has a mass of 50 kilos. Using the formula for kinetic energy, E equals half mv squared, we can see her kinetic energy is 2,500 joules. In order to stop, Holly would need to put in 2,500 joules of work. Work equals force times distance, so if she's stopping over a distance of 100 meters, her stopping force would have to be 25 newtons. Holly's friend Olive is waiting for her at the bottom of the mountain, wearing spiked boots. They both notice that Holly, with her normal boots, sinks into the snow less than Olive, even though they both had the same mass. Why might this be? Remember pressure? Pressure is equal to force divided by the surface area. The force in this case is the mass of the girls, 50 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, 10 meters per second squared. This gives them each a downwards force of 500 newtons. The difference is the surface area of the shoes they wear. Holly's boots have a contact surface area with the ground of 0.2 meters squared, whereas Olive, with her menacing spiked boots, has a contact surface area of only 0.1 meters squared. Using our formula, we can substitute these values in. Olive ends up with a pressure of 5,000 newtons per square meter, while Holly's pressure is only 2,500 newtons per square meter. Olive, as a result, sinks deeper into the snow. What's the advantage to this? Snow boots are like rugby boots. The lower contact surface area of the spikes helps the person dig into the ground with extra pressure, giving them better grip or traction. You're far less likely to slip. Here's some things to remember. Acceleration can be explained in terms of velocity and distance. When forces are balanced, velocity is constant, 
but when forces are unbalanced, they cause acceleration. You should use diagrams to show these forces, showing both direction and size. Pressure can change with either mass or surface area. Smaller surface area means higher pressure, and therefore more traction on soft surfaces.